Open fire cooking has been around forever in every culture in the world and in many countries still is, as my friend Al Frugoni says, a way of life. Here recently, in the last few years, it has exploded and become a really big thing here in the United States as a new way of cooking, but as we know, it's not really a new way. It's been around forever. I'm really happy to see that it is coming back as not just a fun way of cooking, but also a way to bond and have good times with family and friends. Many times when people think about open fire cooking, they think of a little campfire, marshmallows and weenies and things like that. But as I said earlier, it is becoming very popular again not just for that but to cook whole animals to hang all kinds of different kinds of meat you can grill on a grate like this open fire steaks fajitas chicken sausage pretty much anything and I recently attended an event in Bernie Texas where an entire steer weighing over 500 pounds was cooked over an open fire built on the ground. Open fire cooking is a lot of fun, especially when the weather cools off. So I wanted to make this video and share some pro tips and some other tips and tricks and techniques that might help you determine if you want to own an open fire pit. Now this one here is called a magnum. This is uh, basically was originally a burn pit. A burn pit is where you burn down wood and you get the coals and then you shovel those coals and into a grill like this or some other type of cooker. Now this one comes standard with a manual rotisserie. It is height adjustable. It is also length adjustable. Now this is probably my most used open fire pit here at home in the backyard. But I just wanna throw a couple of steaks in there, a couple of fajitas. Quick and easy is what this one is designed for. It's also portable. It's very easy to pick up and lightweight. It also has a side door here that makes it really easy to clean up. Now this grill here is quite a bit bigger and it's a square design, very similar to your Santa Maria style grills. Now this grill also comes with a manual rotisserie. It is also height adjustable, like the other one, where you can go up or down, depends on how much fire you have. So let's get started with some of the pro tips about open fire cooking. So tip number one, it's all about fire control. When you're doing open fire cooking like this, the wind and the ambient temperature outside has a lot to do with how high you should have your meat, how quick it's gonna cook, because the wind just basically carries a lot of that heat away, as opposed to having a barbecue grill or smoker like this over here, which you have a lid on, creates basically an oven effect. There are no gauges or thermometers attached to an open fire pit. So that brings me to tip number two. It takes quite a bit more fire, quite a bit more wood to cook on an open fire grill than it does on a typical smoker or a barbecue grill with a lid on it, where all the heat is contained in there and it basically bakes the barbecue for you. Now that brings us to point number three about wood. You need to be able to source larger amounts of wood and have space to store this said wood, be able to keep it covered up. You also need to be aware that you need some wood that's already seasoned and pretty dried out because green wood creates a lot more smoke and can add a bitter flavor to your meats. The wood's gonna burn down, the coals are gonna burn out a little bit quicker than they would in an enclosed environment. Now it's a great idea to also keep around a few bags of big lump charcoal because that's a great way to get the fire started at the beginning and or if you're running out of wood or low on wood, you can continue to add charcoal too and that will keep your heat up. Now me personally, I prefer some local mesquite lump charcoal or the Fogo brand because it comes with some really big, long lasting, hot burning lump charcoal. All right, that brings us to tip number four. Since you're buying wood, you might as well understand too that the bigger the log is, the more heat and the bigger the fire it's gonna make. A big old 20 inch log, about that big in diameter, is gonna make a lot more fire, take longer to burn, but it will create a lot more heat than a little log that's maybe the size you know, of a baseball. So you might wanna buy accordingly or ask your wood supplier to cut it to the size that you want. Or you can buy a miter saw like I have and just cut the big logs down to the size that works best on the type of grill that you have. Now that brings to tip number five. How big of an open fire grill do you need or want? Now this is a pretty big one designed to cook quite a bit of meat or even whole animals on the rotisserie. This one over here is quite a bit smaller. Will hold about four or five steaks, maybe a few strips of fajitas and some sausage. Now this one has wheels on it, so it makes it easy to move around. This one is light enough where you can pick it up and travel with it. Of course, there are many, many other options. A lot of people like to have a ground pit in their backyard, sometimes surrounded by bricks or rocks. Now another great option I've seen all over Texas is those round fire pits that are also 
kind of portable. Some are much bigger and they sit on the ground on some legs so you can kind of move them around. Those are normally made out of quarter inch steel. They're generally very sturdy and very heavy duty, but there are some cheaper ones out there. So just be aware of that. If you buy one of the cheaper ones, it is gonna rust and or burn out a lot quicker particularly due to the weather conditions. All right, now there's advantages to both above ground or on the ground grills. The advantage to the above ground grills in many cases is that they're portable. And if it's windy or rainy, you can always move it under the porch like I have here. They're also much easier to clean. The advantage to the ground pit is that you can spray a little bit of water on it, extinguish the fire and walk away. Another option is to have some kind of a metal cover over it when you walk away just to make sure you extinguish that fire and ashes don't blow all over the place. Another advantage to the larger grill is that you can have a direct high heat fire zone and you can also have a little room to the side where you can have a dual zone type of system and you can kind of move your meat over there if it's a little too hot. You can also do the flippity flip if you're cooking directly over the fire and after you get your sear you can move the meat a little further away and let it cook a little bit slower. And one more advantage of the bigger open fire pits is that you can slide some of those ashes out of the way and add extra logs and that helps you have some good clean burning fires which also makes the meat taste better. All right, tip number eight, start early. If your party's at seven, give yourself a few hours to really get everything cooked. Because remember, it takes longer to cook with an open fire. So start early, use a little kindling to get your wood going, or use lump charcoal to accelerate the process and get the fire and the wood going a little bit quicker. Because remember, as I mentioned earlier, open fire cooking, the logs burn quicker and the coals burn out a little bit quicker as well. So you'll need to continue to add wood in order to maintain a certain heat level. All right, now tip number nine, there's many, many different types of accessories that you can get with your open fire pit, depending on which one you buy, where you buy it from, and the manufacturer and whatever they make for that particular grill. But there are lots of them that are universal and can work with any fire pit. Do your research, look around a little bit. After you cook on an open fire pit a few times, you're gonna know more or less what you need. Now, if you're new to open fire cooking, I highly recommend you use a meat thermometer. I use a Thermoworks MK4, and I also have a Thermoworks Lollipop. And an Inkbird, I have several. They all work great. It's okay to cheat just to make sure you nail that perfect doneness, especially if you're a beginner or a newbie to open fire cooking, or if you just don't want to waste some really expensive steaks. I also recommend some big, longer tongs like this. These are restaurant style tongs. They're the longer ones because you have a lot of heat. And so sometimes when you try to get in there and flip your meat or move it around, you're exposed to that open fire. So it gets hot quick. So I recommend longer tongs. Always have a pair of really good gloves handy. These are called MagnaChef gloves. These are made for fire by a fireman, a friend of mine from Florida. These are excellent. I highly recommend them. All right, number 10, the flavor's not exactly the same when you do open fire cooking as opposed to an oven style cooking in an enclosed barbecue pit environment. It's really inexplicable. There's just something about the chemical reaction when you have an open fire, a live fire like this, kissing that meat, and there's just some kind of magic that happens when you have that type of a cooking and you get that nice hot fire char, do your flippity flip, get that char. Now you can get a char on a grill too, with the lid closed, you know, depending on how hot it is, but there's just something magical about having an open fire and kissing that meat with an open flame. Number 11, bricks versus grates versus nothing. A lot of your open fire grills that are sold on the market today come with fire bricks laid on the bottom. Those are really great because the bricks get hot. They maintain a really high temperature for a very long time. However, it doesn't allow the ashes to fall through the grates like this style here has grates where the ashes fall to the bottom. You've got about an inch of airspace under the grates. So a lot of the ashes go to the bottom and it doesn't get onto your food. So there's pros and cons to both ways. Now, finally, tip number 12, be very, very careful, especially in windy and or dry conditions. The last thing you want to do is burn your house down or your neighbor's house or start a forest fire when you're out camping somewhere. I really can't stress this enough, especially during this time of this recording, we have droughts all over the country and even in Texas. You gotta be really, really extra careful with your fires, especially when you're done cooking, you wanna make sure you extinguish that fire. And if there's a burn ban, 
in your area, you need to respect that. That burn ban is there for a legitimate reason. Overall, friends, the whole concept of open fire cooking that has become really popular again is amazing. It's a great way to have fun with your family and friends. It's a great way to cook meats and vegetables and all kinds of stuff. You can even throw your Dutch ovens up over the fire and make soups and stews and bread and all kinds of goodness. It's a lot of fun. Make sure that if you have kids around, you share all the safety precautions with them and teach them how to cook on an open fire. I promise you they will thank you later when they're adults. All right, friends, we're gonna wrap it up. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've had a good time making this video and sharing these pro tips with you. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer to the best of my abilities. All right, friends, remember to keep the smoke light, make it work, and make it a wow kind of day. Boom! There are no gauges or thermometers attached to an open fire pit. And my eyes are burning already because the wind's blowing the wrong way. <laughs> On this Magnum here, it has an adjustable height. Oh, that's hot. You can even throw your Dutch ovens up over the fire and make soups and stews and bread and all kinds of goodness. It's a lot of fun. It also lets all the smell and the stink go away into the air instead of in your house. <laughs>